beating my son's head in. Uh, I see this as a hate crime against the homeless and mentally ill. So I'm looking at special circumstances, a murder. I'm looking at the death penalty. And quite frankly, I'll pull the switch. You'd like to be there to pull the switch when he's convicted? And yeah. Yeah. That's what my son was asking for, for help, crying out my name. And that's the least I can do for my son. Does this change how you feel about most police officers? It does indeed. It absolutely does. Yeah. Uh, you used to be a police officer. Yeah, I did. A uh, deputy in Orange County. Yeah. Now, I realize, of course, that not all cops are bad. But, you know, something tragic has happened to me, uh, to the whole family, and certainly to Kelly. And I do look at things differently, a lot differently. Where I've never condoned brutal action by police officers at all, I've, I've just had it with police for now. Have any of the police officers or their families made any attempt to apologize to you? Oh, no, not at all. There's no contact at all. They can't make any contact with me, you know, this kind of thing. So, no, none of the police officers have tried to contact me necessarily. I have had some disturbing emails sent to me. Um, the FBI are, is checking into those. Um, but, no, they won't try and contact me. Are you glad you're not a police officer today? Yeah, I, I, it'd be very hard to do my job the way I would have to do it. Being a cop is not an easy job. There's no doubt about that. Um, they do get in fights. They, they, they have a horrible job sometimes, uh, but then again, on other times, it's very gratifying. But the bottom line is this group of rogue officers did not follow the right uh, policies and procedures or the methods for arrest and control. What do you think the punishment for the police officer that stood by and allowed the beating to take place without trying to stop the other officer? What do you think his culpability, what should his be punishment be? Well, that's accessory to murder. Absolutely, uh, for not stopping a murder in their presence, as bound by law to do. Not only that, a police officer sworn to protect and to serve did nothing for my son. An absolute accessory to murder. Supposing some of the onlookers that are now witnesses had stepped forward and attacked the police officer that was doing the beating to stop them, do you believe they would have been justified to grab that cop, take him down, take his weapon away from him? Well, certainly. I do. I do. I mean, there's a line. I mean, there's an absolute line, an officer doing his job and somebody committing a murder. And uh, I honestly feel it's uh, every citizen's right and obligation to do that. Now, what would have happened? They, they would have all been beat up, if not killed themselves, uh, maybe even shot with a, a gun, not just a taser. You know, all that would have happened. And quite frankly, that's why they didn't step in, scared to death. Should the citizens be that scared to stop a police officer who's murdering somebody who's already on the ground? In the city of Fullerton, yes, because they will all turn on the citizens. You know, th there was a second officer on top of my son, stepped in to handcuff him as his head was being beaten in. And instead of stopping the officer who was doing that and saying, hey, I'll take over, you know, because this guy's obviously lost in the moment or whatever his thing was, He's getting my son's blood splattered on him, and that was an inconvenience to him, so he got up and quit trying to handcuff my son because of the amount of blood getting on him. That's an accessory to first-degree murder. So he should get the same punishment, death? Yeah, I, well, at least absolute life without parole. Had you been there, your son was calling out, Dad, I saw a video on YouTube. Uh, your son was saying, Dad, 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 help me. Had you been there, would you have attacked the police officers? I would have died that night. Yeah. And then the story would have been father and son attacked police officers. Yeah, regardless, I would have done what I could for my son. Yeah, I don't care about stories. He needed, he needed me, he needed somebody to step in. I would have died for him that night. Why wasn't he at home? Why was he homeless? It's the disease, schizophrenia, and my daughter put it best. He was never homeless. He had more homes than any of us can imagine having. He had mine, his mother's, all the relatives, brothers, sisters, friends. He would not stay in anybody's home. He wanted to be, um, he wanted to be on the streets. And I have found um, this is what schizophrenic people want to do. They don't want to sleep in a bed. They'll sleep on a floor. They want to sleep outside. It's a horrible, horrible disease. So. All the people out there saying, where were they? You know, it's just, you know, where's the mom and dad? All this kind of stuff. It's not that easy at all. It's a horrible thing to go through. He just wanted to be free and go out and do his own thing on the street. Didn't want to stay there? 
Absolutely. Over 18, not a harm to himself or others, not causing a crime. He's a free citizen in the United States. That's what we stand for. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. There's a rumor out there that uh, the police got a call that somebody was trying to break into cars. Do you think that was your son? Well, first of all, I think it was a rumor. Uh, police reports uh, have not substantiated anything going on like that, other than a call came in. Um, there's nothing to indicate that there were burglaries that night in, in any cars. Uh, witness statements don't substantiate it at all. Let's just say there was. In fact, let's say my son had stolen property on him. He resisted. He ran. I'll give all that to him. I don't care. What's the bottom line? They tried to apprehend him from the neck up. And the method they chose was absolute beating, brutal beating, to accomplish uh, an arrest. Wrong on so many levels. How many years do you think it'll take before we'll ever see that video or see this go to a trial, if it ever goes to a trial? It's going to go to trial, and I expect it to happen fairly quick, actually within a year. I'm doing what I can to get it pushed to a federal level, take it out of the hands of the district attorney's office, and I'm very confident it will accelerate the process. Are you familiar with the Andrea Nelson murder? I am indeed. Did she get justice? No. Did Tony Rakakos do a proper investigation in that case? No, no. And in fact, has he ever done a proper investigation as far as that goes uh, concerning police officers uh, with this kind of crime? You know. So with that kind of a district attorney, do you really think he'll really bring murder charges against any of these police officers? I don't expect it. I had a one-on-one -on -one interview with Tony Rakakis. I don't expect it at all. I expect maybe uh, involuntary manslaughter at the most uh, from Rakakis. That's why I wanted to go to a federal level. Involuntary manslaughter? I mean, they were actively beating him with a club. Well, you talk about Tony Rakakis, though. So. Yeah. So you have no faith in the district attorney of Orange County? I don't at all. I don't at all. Neither does Andrea Nelson's mother have any faith in. Uh, why do you think he failed? You were a sheriff deputy for six years. Did you know Mike Corona? I did. Did you know anything that should have sent him to prison long before he was sent to prison? I, 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 no, I, I don't know anything about that. Did you read your Orange County grand jury report on Mike Corona? I did. I did. He had a lot of things in his closet, you know. A lot of things. And ac actually, I wasn't a deputy during his term, but still, I, you know, like everybody else, I, I heard what the media had to offer about him. Do you think he got off lightly? I'm talking about Mike Corona. I didn't really follow it. You know, quite honestly, I don't know what he got. I, I don't know his status. I understand there was over 100 charges, and they only put him in jail for one charge. Well, then I'd say he got off very lightly. Very lightly, you know, and it's a shame. The man seemed like he was man of the year across the nation, you know, uh, America's sheriff. I mean, it just larger than life kind of image. He, he's a fantastic man, and evidently he succumbed to the, I don't know if it was the um, position, the popularity, what happened to him. But um, Do you think it was proper for his wife to have the contract with the jail canteen for all the stuff that gets sold in there? Even after charges came forward, I understand Mike Corona's wife still kept the contract. Yeah, I mean, that's an absolute conflict of interest. You can't have that. Nothing to do with anything uh, that associates with money. If it's volunteer time, completely nonprofit, whatever, well, okay, that's different. But when you're running a business for the organization your husband is the head of, complete conflict of interest. Do you think Mike Corona's girlfriend, I don't know if you were familiar with his girlfriend, that she had any secret money dealings with the Sheriff's Department? I have no idea. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time and your interview, and you know, my condolences for your son. It's a, a tragic thing. It shouldn't have happened. And we'll be following this case. We'll be back here again. Thank you very much, Mr. Thomas. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, I'm William Wagner here with the father of Kelly Thomas on a Saturday, August... 20th, isn't it? August 20th, 2011. We'll see if this Tony Rokakis, who wouldn't indict Mike Corona, the ex-sheriff who's now doing time in federal prison, allegedly, we'll see if this Tony Rokakis will actually bring criminal charges against any of the six 
police officers from the Fullerton Police Department. I should tell you, I've also asked the Fullerton Police Department if they would give me a statement on camera, and they've declined to say anything or give out any information that isn't already published, including the photographs of the six officers. I'm William Wagner here in Fullerton. Stay tuned. Well, taking my hat off for you people. That was my report from just last weekend down in Fullerton, California, a city in Orange County. And that Ron Thomas, six years a veteran, Orange County Sheriff Deputy, he's not happy with having six city cops from Fullerton literally beat his son. You saw the graphic pictures. We actually have another picture, but we can't show it to you before midnight. Uh, it's too graphic. Um, you saw the bus witnesses, you know, and thank God for the quick thinking bus driver who had the presence of mind to quickly turn on the video recorder and start recording what you could see up ahead, which you can't see much because it's dark. But then you get the witnesses boarding the bus and they lay it off. They, they're killing them. They're kicking them to death. Had that bus driver not released that and somebody got it up on YouTube, you can be sure Tony Rakakis would have sealed that tape to protect the criminals. And when I say the criminals, I mean especially Cincinnati, Cincinnati the cop that's allegedly beating Kelly Thomas on the head with a nightstick or a big long flashlight. We're not sure yet, uh, but it was totally unnecessary. I spoke to several witnesses. We're not gonna bring you their testimony yet because I'm still trying to get other witnesses. And we'll have a show where there's up to, I think, 15 witnesses available. And we'd like to get them all lined up and then let you hear what the eyewitnesses said. I mean, this was murder. This was murder by cops in a U.S. city. And you may say, well, he was, uh, you know, 120 pound or 130 pound man. Here's a 180 pound cop beating a 120, 130 pound man to death. And the man's yelling out, dad, dad, help me. Several witnesses. And there's a YouTube clip where you can barely hear it, but you can hear it. All this going on? And district attorney for too many years, Tony Rakakis is a bad DA. He's been there too long. I can think of at least a dozen cases he either should have prosecuted and didn't, or he shouldn't have prosecuted and did. Julie Witherspoon an army truck driver. He just sent in his little deputy knucklehead and had I not had a camera in that courtroom, the jury probably would have thought, oh, I guess we'll find her guilty, even though she, it will destroy her military career, even though she's innocent, because we don't want the cops to look bad. But I think just having my camera in there, and they brought in a reserve judge who didn't know what was what, and he granted me permission to tape that. I think the jury and the judge behaved themselves and came to the correct verdict, found Julie not guilty of all charges. Now what Tony Rakakis, the district attorney of Orange County, should have done is he should have brought charges against the cops, but nothing was done. 